A sound drew the creature's attention. It snapped its globular head around sharply and probed the dusty gloom with its keen eyes. A wall had fallen only recently, bringing down a section of the ceiling with it. The rubble was still settling. And there was that sound again, loud in the dusty silence. The scraping of rock against rock, the sound of that rubble shifting. There it was, the protruding shape of a gloved hand twitching. The creature scuttled towards it eagerly. It walked on two legs, but hunched over, using its two hands and two claws as well for improved speed and balance. This was what it had been searching for, exactly what the creature needed. Life. A human figure lay sprawled amid the wreckage, pinned by a roof beam across his chest. He had been struggling to free himself, but didn't have the strength. He let out a low groan and fell still. He didn't even react to the appearance of the creature looming over him, had it not been so desperate. The creature turned its keen eyes upon its prey. They were met by their own reflections in a pair of dark-tinted lenses. The fallen human's eyes were hidden, so the creature couldn't tell if it had made contact with its mesmerizing gaze or not. The human was unlikely to put up a struggle anyway. The creature's tongue slavered in anticipation behind its fangs as it searched for a seam or a crack in the human's armor. A vulnerable spot. The best point at which to strike in order to deliver its critical payload. Had its mind been less addled, it would have known that the search was futile. The creature's prey didn't have to struggle against it. It was enough that, at that moment, he released his final breath and died. The creature couldn't accept it at first, couldn't accept that its most desperate hope had been thwarted. It worried at the fallen human with his hands and claws. It tried to prod, push, frighten him into motion. It was no use. He was no use to the creature any longer. No more than a slab of cooling meat now. It threw back its globular head and howled its anguish to the sky. Missiles screamed across the grey sky, leaving smoke trails like scars in their wakes. The Death Corpsman saw them coming and sprang into well-drilled action. They broke formation, leapt for cover where they could find it. A moment later, fire blossomed three times within their ranks, and scores of them were consumed. The rest of the forces continued their relentless advance. The young trooper would have expected no less of them. Many of the attacking soldiers had dropped to their stomachs, hauling themselves forward on their elbows. They returned fire, from missile launches of their own and from the vehicle-mounted stubbers. Some of them, the nearest to their objective, the ruined city, lobbed crack grenades. They were targeting the defenders' gun emplacements wherever they could identify them. The ruined city shook with the impacts of their projectiles, and the turret in which the young trooper crouched threatened to crumble beneath him. He heard the general's voice bellowing over the clamor. Target the enemy's big guns. Destroy them and you will reduce their offensive capability. Do not be distracted by their... A particularly fierce explosion close by drowned out the rest. The instructions had been heard elsewhere, however. Another pair of missiles shot out from inside the city. They streaked over the skull-masked heads of the attacking army. Bringing up the soldiers' rear was a ragged line of artillery units. The first missile struck an Earthshaker cannon and cracked its armored shell. The second, however, fell short and only claimed more human lives. The rest of the Death Corpsmen had crawled into Long Laz range. It was the turn of the snipers to do their work. In the doorways and windows all round the young trooper, muzzles flashed. He held his own fire, however. There had not been enough sniper rifles available for everyone. He remembered the general's admonishment. A shot fired too soon is a shot wasted. The snipers were doing little good anyhow. For every corpsman cut down by their las beams, four more surged forwards to replace him. Some were driving their dead along before them, utilizing their bodies as shields. 
They too had been taught to make the best use of every resource. Remember your orders. It has already been calculated that you cannot win this battle. Today you face defeat at the small cost of your worthless lives. But die bravely, die hard, and praise be to the Emperor. The young trooper's moment was approaching. This was what he had been waiting for, that brief window of opportunity during which the enemy would be within his range, before they overran his position. Hardly any time at all in which to act. Did he worry he might fail in his Emperor-appointed task? Did he offer up a prayer to his god for his immortal soul? He knew that his first shot would betray his presence. It would have to be a good one, then. His best shot. He chose his target. It could have been any of the advancing corpsmen, really. He aimed for the eyepieces of the mask. Did he wonder at all about the face behind those dark lenses? Did the young trooper ask himself if it might be a face he recognized? A single las beam through the brain. Failing that, if the mask was only damaged, still, it would expose the wearer's skin to the poisonous atmosphere. Death would be equally certain a slow and lingering death. A single moment, but the young trooper had been waiting for it all his life. He held his breath and squeezed his trigger. A voice, a human voice, had lured the creature here to this far city square. Still partially intact, although most of the avenues and staircases that branched off from it had collapsed. However, something was wrong. It could taste it on the fetid air that there had been life here, and not too long ago. Not now, though. The square was empty. From where, then, had the taunting voice originated? The answer came in the form of an electronic squeal, which set the creature's hackles on end. A short burst of radio static. Then the voice blared out again, startlingly loud and close. It emanated from a metal box above the creature's head, a speaker, affixed to the side of a mangled rusty lifter cage. The creature howled again and lashed out with its claws. Its first swipe cut the speaker's wires and choked off its lying promises. The creature's blind fury, however, was not assaged. It reached up and gripped the speaker with both hands. It wrenched it from its moorings and dashed it to the ground. There was silence for a moment, long enough for the creature to contemplate its failure, to mourn its unfulfilled existence, if indeed it was capable of such thoughts. And then, then, something new, a new sound, the unmistakable clomp of approaching footsteps. A delicious new sound, and a new taste in the air. Did the creature stop to ponder its incredible fortune? Did it offer up a prayer in gratitude to its tyrannid gods for sending it this perfect life form, this human being, this lone human being, at its time of direst need? The new arrival wore armor, a dark great coat, and a full face mask. His garb made him indistinguishable from his fallen dead comrade. He had likely been drawn here by the creature's howl. His weapon was readied. That put it at a disadvantage. Had it more time, had it known that someone was coming, it would have sought out cover, prepared an ambush. As it was, it was caught out in the open, exposed. The creature caught the human's eye through his dark lenses. He snapped up his rifle to cover it, but didn't fire. Did it occur to the creature to wonder why, or did it merely count its blessings once again? It had to get closer to him. It couldn't risk any sudden moves, however. It stole a step, two steps, towards its victim, keeping its keen eyes trained on him all the way. The human being backed away a single step, he had already looked into the creature's eyes too long. He was transfixed. It had him now. A plaintive whine. An attempted cry for help, perhaps, 
died in the human's throat. The last shred of his will to resist. He had actually fought longer than most. He relaxed his battle-ready stance and lowered his weapon. He surrendered himself to his natural predator. <laughs>